doing, doing Michael Bay styles over here with the one wheel. <laughs> if you put the already insane Sony a7S III on steroids. The FX6, a tiny cinema camera with all of the insane capabilities of the Sony a7S III, the 4K up to 120 frames per second in 10-bit 422, 240 frames per second in 1080, the best low light in the game with a dual base ISO setting at 12,800, crazy high bit rates up to 600 megabits per second, beautiful dynamic range. But with the FX6, you also get s tone colors like on the Venice, built-in variable ND filter, XLR inputs, SDI out, time code, yes, even time code for all you cinema nerds, all in a tiny cinema camera body that might just be one of my favorites ever. This is Mark's uh, FX9, and this is the new FX6. Mark. What are your thoughts on <laughs> I can't believe how tiny it is. It like, it's like someone chopped my FX9 in half, but kept everything in it. Yeah, like all the good stuff is still in there. It's like this, so powerful. Now, most people won't care about this, but for a dock guy who has separate cow mat, cow mat, sound man. <laughs> this is how excited cow I am. Cow man. Cow man. <laughs> Look at this, time code in, time code in. And SDI out, I, I often shoot with other monitors or I'm sending uh, a wireless signal, it's like, this is a pro camera in the tiniest body I've seen. If I'm honest, I was expecting the FX6 to be a little bit of a letdown because let's face it, the FX5 just wasn't that good. And typically the camera companies with their lower end cinema cameras tend to really put down the cripple hammer and they just don't put in all of the best features so that they can protect their higher level cinema cameras. But the FX6 is not like the other, in fact, in a lot of ways, it's actually better than the Big Brother FX9, which is interesting. Sony is just blasting ahead in terms of video in their cameras. Even the Sony a7S III just looks mental. It looks so, so good. And that's just a tiny mirrorless camera. The FX6 is using the same sensor as the a7S III. You just get some of those cinema camera perks from having a little bit bigger of a body. And I like this body a lot. It's the right shape and the size is nice too. You can still build it out if you need to, but you can also go super minimalist with just the body, lens, and your LCD screen. But you do need the handle for the XLR inputs. Also, I gotta say, I like this LCD screen a lot. It packs away really nicely. It kind of has this little hood so you can see a little bit better, but also it just moves around really easily. Unlike most cinema cameras, I feel like this is how it should be. And I also like that this just packs up and protects the LCD screen really nicely. This thing is so covered in dust. I'm sorry, Sony, but we got some epic footage. Can you guys agree? That footage was 
Oh my gosh, it took me so long to edit that footage because there was just so much good stuff. Huge thanks to my friend Mark Bone for helping put together that whole shoot. I definitely could not have done it without him. He's also just an incredible DP and director and helped shoot a lot of that footage. Uh, okay, first off, Mark has his own YouTube channel. It's really good, you should watch it. And me and Mark, used to shoot together all the time back in the day. We used to shoot for Nike and San Pellegrino. San Pellegrino, uh... Energizer? Energizer, Energizer. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we always come back to the Energizer buddy. That was like one of the first I'm, things we shot. I'm gonna together. find that link, Mati, and we're gonna show a clip Please of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. That was the video where the Energizer bunny literally showed up to set without his feet. And, and we had to wait he like- couldn't, He couldn't perform. No, couldn't perform. Couldn't perform without the feet, even though they weren't showing in the Oh my God. Couldn't it, perform without it, it was me and Maddie's first commercial and we're like, we're gonna, we got this. And then he shows up no feet and they're like, it's an emergency. <laughs> We had to sit around set for two hours while they ran around the city looking for bunny feet. And also Callie, she's like one of the best ballet dancers in Canada. So this is Callie. She's gonna be the talent today. Uh, she's like, she won't say it, but she's like one of the best. Are you the best ballet dancer no. in Canada? Can I say the best? No. Yeah. If you wanna go uh, follow her on Instagram maybe? Yeah. Instagram, uh, she's gonna be doing all the, all the sick moves here for us to film. So we have something interesting. Uh, a little bit more interesting than my editor, Matt. He's, he's not as interesting to film. <laughs> I digress. Okay, so typically I think Sony has struggled a little bit in two areas with autofocus and their color science. And I can say the autofocus is incredible on the FX6. We filmed a lot of that footage on the Sigma 35 mm F 1.2, that's like crazy shallow depth of field. And the FX6 did a really good job of keeping focus way better than I could ever do in manual most of the time, probably like 99% of the time. It was incredible. I gotta make a full video on this lens too. This thing is a beast. But Sony autofocus has come a long way to the point where I would say it's right up there with Canon. Sometimes it's a little bit worse, sometimes it's a little bit better. So it's a little bit of a toss up to say which is better, but I can fully 100% rely on Sony autofocus now. Color science. Before I wasn't that big of a fan of Sony colors, but now with S Cine tone colors and even with the A7S III, I don't know what they did. I don't know if it's just the 10-bit 422, but the colors are looking so, so much better. To the point where I think Sony's color science is starting to be the closest thing to the Alexa colors, which is saying a lot. Alexa colors are, they are the king of color science and looking cinematic, film-like quality and colors in digital, but they also run you anywhere from 40 to $100,000. Some of them you can't even buy, like the Alexa 65. The colors are so much better now on Sony cameras, especially the ones with S Cine Tone. It just has a real cinematic vibe to it. Now the skin tones did look a little green straight out of camera, but a simple hue fix for the orange just makes it look incredible. The whole time we were filming with Mark, we were just like, oh my gosh, the footage looks so beautiful. I love the full frame look. 15 plus stops of dynamic range with S-Log3 in Cine EI mode and super clean, even at 120 frames per second. Heck, the 240 frames per second looks really great. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, and this is, this I know, 422, 12,000 ISO, 10 bit, autofocus. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think Mark is having a meltdown. I'm not sure what's happening to Mark. <laughs> This might be the only time I've ever come close to crying while using a camera. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even, I'm just it's, thinking it's of all, moving, isn't I'm it? thinking as a filmmaker, like I'm imagining myself <laughs> in dark, dark places with this camera and it is, it is seeing in the dark. How it's far there. we've come oh from my gosh. Mark II. Oh to my this. gosh. <laughs> 240 at 1080. I mean, the last time I shot 240 was probably with you, Mati, when we first met each other in that abandoned school. Was it the FS700? Oh, the FS700. <laughs> and, and you know what? There's no cash, cash record. No, yeah, yeah, the eight second cash, you'd have to buffer it to the yeah. card afterwards, it'd oh. take forever. 
The 120, that's, that's old school. 240 is the new 120. And of course you get that crazy low light sensitivity from the A7S III, which makes the FX6 the best cinema camera in terms of low light, which is a big deal, especially for all you dock shooters like Mark. We filmed these last shots in 120 frames per second in this like pitch black, dark catacomb area, and it still looks really great. Granted, there's a little bit of noise, of course, but it still looks really nice. And it's not just <laughs> what you see, like there's more beneath us, so. And when I say very dark, I mean like pure dark. Um, I promise you're not gonna walk into anything. Welcome to the tunnels. The catacombs. What is this? Yeah, uh, just so you know, there have been bats down here. Actually? Yeah, uh, actual? yeah actual bats. Oh, great. Uh, oh, so yeah, this was the first hydro building in, I believe, Southern Ontario for sure. I don't know about all of Canada, but we predated electricity to Toronto by like 10 plus years. So this was the hub of all electricity. And With Tesla's power or something? Yeah, yeah. So Nikola Tesla, his tech was in here and there's rumors that he had worked in here at a little bit, but By I just way, want that to be true. To stay there. I'm so jealous of Matt's <laughs> A7S III right now. Is this helpful? Yeah. <laughs> Can you hold it under your face and, and, yeah. and tell the stories that way? So, uh, 130 years ago. Uh, so this is like, there's this cool pocket of light that we get down here. Uh, we also have some plywood because obviously it's not the safest uh, thing to have just a hole in the center. We don't want <laughs> Kelly spinning and then you know, just dropping to her doom. Oh, that's rust. These are bear droppings. Oh, goodness, what's this? $100? <laughs> Is this, is this an the escape United room? States of Halloween. <laughs> are, are we doing an escape room right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. ah! <laughs> <laughs> For a second, you had me. Oh, For a yeah. second, my heart was like, what was that? <laughs> so Jeffrey Driftwood is a exact life-size replica of me. <laughs> Unexpected. All right, ready? Vic still hasn't said anything. I think he's <laughs> staying quiet, so not in your shots. <laughs> this is definitely the craziest YouTuber space I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I was just about to say, I thought my office was cool, but you just blow it out of the water. Having a second base ISO at 12,800 is just like, what is that? You'll, you'll never not have enough light. Like Never. with 12,000 as your base ISO. This isn't boosting the game. No. This is the base ISO. That's crazy. I didn't even know it had two ISOs. When we were down in the catacombs with the A7S III, I could see more through my camera <laughs> than I could with my own eyes. Yeah. And I, so this is the same thing. This is, we might as well just- It sees go, better than our own eyes. <laughs> this is night vision now. I love the built-in variable ND filter. So this is different from a lot of cinema cameras like the Canon cinema cameras where they're just adding like a slide of ND filter. There's no in between or adjusting those. Whereas this is a fully variable ND filter built inside. So you don't have to worry about any ND filters on the outside, but no camera is perfect. So where does the FX6 go wrong? Well, first off, just starting up the cameras, the menus are, not my favorite, let's just say. I do not, I've never really liked Sony menus. I don't know what it is about them. The A7S III menus, for example, are a little bit better than the past mirrorless cameras, but going from a Canon cinema camera to a Sony cinema camera and dealing with the menus, it is just a headache. And you might be thinking, why does that even matter? Well, it does when you're using it and you're trying to get to settings, if it's taking up too much time or you just can't find the thing that you're looking for. Sony, you really gotta work on those menus. I still do not enjoy them. And the other thing that I'm not a big fan of is that Cine EI mode, which is the mode you need to use to get the highest quality out of the FX6. And I still don't really understand how the Cine EI mode works but basically when you're in Cine EI you can't just adjust the ISO you're stuck at the base ISO which is 800 or you can go to 12,800 which is really nice but you can't just go up a little bit or down a little bit it's a really confusing workflow if you haven't used it before and you don't know what it is you will hate it also 
but it's something that you get used to fairly quickly. Sony's also coming out with this new cine lens, which is a 16 to 35, and it has a servo zoom built in. It's a really interesting lens. It even has autofocus, but honestly, we just didn't have any time to test it out. So maybe I'll get to it a little bit later. I will say though, it's about the same size as the FX6, and I think it's actually heavier than the FX6, which is crazy. Honestly, the whole experience of using the FX6 was really positive. Everything from shooting with it, except for the menus, but the image was so beautiful. The size and weight, I really like. It just allows for so much more creativity when you're not hindered by the size or weight of it, or you're just getting tired and you just don't feel like getting those shots anymore. By the way, all of that footage was filmed handheld, no gimbals or anything like that. Of course, I had my uh, one wheel, which is kind of like a dolly gimbal. And even the post workflow was really nice. This footage from the FX6, I was able to edit on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is my main editing machine usually. It worked pretty well. And you get all of this for six, thousand dollars which is a lot of money but when you're comparing it to other cinema cameras for example the c70 from canon that's uh five thousand five hundred dollars and it's a super 35 and does not have a lot of the capabilities of the fx6 it's hard not to recommend this. If you're looking to get a cinema camera, your first cinema camera, the FX6 should be really high, if not at the top of your list. It's such a versatile camera. It might just be the best documentary camera ever because of how capable it is, yet still having a really small and lightweight design. You could easily film like a pretty high-end music video on this thing, narrative work, weddings, Heck, you could even travel with this because it is so light. I could even I could even vlog on this. I could literally vlog on this because it is that small and lightweight. I feel like my 1DX Mark II was heavier than this. It's so good that I came into reviewing the FX6 thinking it'll be just a fun camera to review, but it's not for me. To the point now where I'm thinking I'm just gonna sell my C300 Mark II and get one of these things. I don't know, 2020 just feels like the most crazy year for cameras. None of us can complain. Like not one of you can complain about cameras and they're not being a good camera for you because they're so, so many good cameras to choose from right now. The Sony FX6 is the baby Alexa. I think that sums it up pretty close. It's the closest thing at least. Everything is so best B. Kristoff, you gotta clean that spot a little bit. I also love that I lugged this giant Aperture Nova, you probably can't even see it, and some other lights. And we didn't use a single light, we just used the natural light, it was so good. Oh, what a shoot. FX6? Yeah, it's... It's pretty good.